Hey everybody, welcome back to follow up of last week's video where, where we talked about five essential baits for beginners coming to Northwestern Ontario. Today we're going to talk about some of the essential equipment that I think beginners or novice anglers coming up to Northwestern Ontario for the first time should bring with them just to make your trip an overall better experience and we're going to start right now. So after talking to Richard, following last week's video, we talked about just the logistics of coming up into Canada, what he needs to bring to be a first-time muskie angler up here, and he agreed that it might just be easier for him to hire me for a day or another guide or fish with somebody at the lodge he's staying at. But that being said, I reached out to the YouTube community and you guys listened and gave me some feedback. And we kind of run through some of the essential stuff in a poll I did. I'll drop the link or a picture of it right here. And one of the most important things everybody said is you need release tools. And this is how we store them. We'll go through it a little bit. I'm not going to get detailed in there because we did do a release tool video right here. And what I will touch on is that for any first time muskie angler... You can have a rod and a reel. I could give you a bucktail and a suic off the wall. You could probably fish all week and catch fish. But if you don't have the proper equipment to take those fish off of the hook, get them in the net, out of the net, measure them, release them safely, it's probably not even worth going musky fishing without all the extra equipment. So the first thing we're going to talk about for release equipment is you got to have some good pliers to remove the hooks. I like pistol grip style pliers only because it's a more natural position to get your hand in. In my bag here, we keep pliers. We have a small set of needle nose in here. Forceps in case we cut hooks. On here I have, there's um, nail clippers for cutting line if it's wrapped around gills. And four cutters. We have a Capri brand, or this is a Capri brand here off of Amazon. They're pretty cheap, but they actually work really well, better than like the bargain basement ones you would get at a department store, a hardware store, and then the Nipex. And in a lot of cases, if you're going to buy one pair, just spend the $80 or whatever they cost in your area and get the Nipex. These ones are a few years old and they're just, they're well worth their money. Other thing I will talk about is the Grabit tool. And this is something that we just got new this year. And this is following the advice of Doug Wagner. He uses them a lot. And we just wanted to add one in the boat because there are times when a fish is hooked deeply or really bad and it has multiple hooks in it and you just can't get in there with your hands. This way you can get in there, at least hold one hook while you're working on the other one with your other pliers. I know these have went up in price a lot, but something like this for beginners, it keeps your hands out of danger's way. Another item that I think is essential for beginners or novice are release gloves. Don't be a hero and stick your hands in the gill plate of a muskie or a big pike if you've never done it before. One thrash and they can literally gill rake the back of your hand to the point of bleeding and being sore for an entire week. I know a lot of us do it without gloves. We have a lot of experience, but we still have accidents. Usually it's the smaller fish that will thrash around more than the bigger fish, but gloves are cheap. Just get a set of gloves, protect your hands. Nothing's gonna ruin your trip quicker than getting a gill rash all down the back or getting a hook in the finger or the thumb. While these won't prevent getting a hook or a, a tooth in your thumb or your finger, it's going to lessen it to some degree, so get some release gloves for sure. I wrote an article for Hooked Magazine a couple years ago called Prepping for E-Socks. And I reached out to my buddy, John Mish. He guides up at one of the Northern Canada um, Pike Lodges. And this is Scott Colpin, his buddy. And he gave me some insight on some of the things that he thinks people should bring or have prepared as they go on a musky hunt or a northern pike hunt and beyond the release tools the first thing he said is you got to have the proper net and or a cradle and because he's talking about a fly-in fishing trip he thinks a cradle is a good idea because it's real easy to wrap up 
and bring on a plane or it doesn't take a lot of room. So that's something that you can consider. My cradle's in my bass boat right now, so I didn't dig it out. But for nets, this here is a Stowmaster Tournament Series folding. This is probably the easiest way and I believe Freybill makes a folding one as well. Don't quote me on that. This is easy to store in a boat. It's easy to put in your truck or your car to bring up here. Unfortunately, musky nets are a lot of money. There's no way around that. There's a few cheaper brands. Ranger makes a really nice net that's relatively inexpensive that we've used in the past. Here is one that a lot of people recommend. This is the Freyville Power Catch. This is the Big Kahuna model. And we like this net a lot. Between the two, we kind of use both of them. We also use Loki brand nets. Nets are totally up to you guys. There's a ton of brands out there. Just get one big enough to hold a big muskie. A lot of companies make a smaller size muskie net, which would kind of double as a pike net as well. So just don't skimp out on the net. You are not going to put a 45-inch muskie in a walleye net. And not only are you going to do damage to the fish, you're probably going to put yourself in harm's way trying to get that fish out of that He's net. So following up on nets, most beginners are going to want to have some way of measuring their fish. The easiest way is a bump board and those not familiar with bump boards they fold out to 60 inches you lay your fish on there and you get an accurate measurement again they're pretty expensive yeah. not something that a first time angler probably wants to commit to buying the easy way to get around that lots of companies make these folding measure sticks this one just come out of my ice fishing sleigh that's why it's wet okay but these are real inexpensive they're easy to find you can throw it in a backpack and bring it up on your canada trip like my buddy john mish said if you're going to a fly out or to a lodge that maybe doesn't have a lot of musky equipment you can just leave this behind in the boat or give it to the camp manager and he can let somebody else that's going to fish musky use it because they're relatively inexpensive there's a couple other items that I want to touch on. We'll touch on, you need to prepare for the worst up here in Canada. A lot of our areas don't have fully stocked tackle shops. Depending on where you go, you may have zero access to terminal tackle, line, even to spare lures. So come prepared. We always carry tons of spare terminal tackle. I'm not going to get into that. Um, I did a video here where we talked about terminal tackle and storage, but suffice to say, I have tons of leaders in here. I have weights, I have split rings, I have everything to make up leaders because I also keep the uh, pliers to make leaders up in the boat if I need to. But bring a few extra leaders, bring some terminal tackle with you. We always have spare hooks and items that are needed to rebuild lures on the water. So again, I'm not going to go right into that there. And then have some tools so that you can do that. I got split ring pliers in here. I have cutters. I have cutters for braided line. And I have a measuring tape in here to girth a fish if we get a fish big enough. This goes with us everywhere. Super easy. And that right there doesn't take up very much room in a backpack or in your boat. The next most important item I think that a lot of people forget is a first aid kit. And this is how we store our first aid kit. We have pretty much everything we need in here. And I can't tell you exactly what you need. You may have special things that you need in your first aid kit. People that are allergic to bee stings, etc. are going to have their EpiPen handy. Stuff like that. We have just tons of band-aids and gauze tape to wrap up. Most of our injuries are going to be like gill rash or you get a hook in the finger or you get you know a poke from a fish or something so we're well stocked there but we keep everything we need in a first aid kit like this this goes with me pretty much everywhere even if i'm jumping in another buddy's boat i'm taking this with me so don't rely on the first aid kit that's going to be in a camp boat that's just going to be your stock little square box first aid kit it'll have some band-aids and a few things 
come prepared and bring the stuff that you think you guys are going to need. And back to my buddy, John Mesh, he said one of his hacks real easy is bring some hockey tape. It works like gauze tape. And he said that if we have a season where the mosquitoes are really bad, he's like, you can tape up your pant legs. You could tape up your wrist of your shirt to keep the mosquitoes from going in. We're keeping wood ticks off if you're doing any kind of hiking around. So that's a good tip. And hockey tape works good for just wrapping up your fingers if you get a uh, gill rash on it. So one of the next important things that I think a lot of people forget about if they're bringing their own boat is tools. Most guys will have a spare prop. They'll have a prop wrench and that may be it. We always have a tool kit. We put it in a waterproof case like this. This probably weighs, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds. And we did a video right here where Dave and I run into some real trouble last year. We actually had to remove the lower unit on my 50 horse and we didn't have all the right tools specific to my motor so i went back in and i made the tool kit with everything that i need it might be overkill for a trip to canada but if you guys are bringing a boat up here have all the tools that you're going to need again if you're staying in a remote area you may have zero access to a marina or a repair shop simple things like in here i have prop nuts that are specific to my boat that i may not be able to find anywhere all the size of fuses that I might need, all kinds of different tools in here. I have a floating um, prop wrench. Again, the video that we posted kind of goes through it, but have stuff specific to your boat, including stuff like fuel filters and spark plugs for your boat. That's just an item that especially if you're staying at a remote lodge or a lodge that you're getting gas from, there's no guarantee that that gas is going to be as fresh or as good as getting it from the local um, gas station. So you may run into water problems or condensation problems and you're going to want to have a spare fuel filter. You're going to want to bring some additive like a seafoam product to try and break down that water. Just come as prepared as you can especially with your own boat. With a camp boat, it's not such a big deal because the camp owners will take care of that for you. Another item for you guys that are bringing your own boat that I see a lot of people neglect, and while it's not common, it's not totally uncommon, get a spare prop for your trolling motor. Canadian Shield Lakes can be notoriously bad for rocks coming out of nowhere. And if you come up here for the first time, if you're trying to musky fish or fish for any other species for that matter, there's a good chance you're going to be around structure and shield rocks can come out of nowhere. And we've seen people break the prop or they break the shear pin inside there. So it's, we always have a spare prop nut and the little shear pin that holds it in place. Again, it might be overkill, but... That'll ruin your week in a hurry if you don't have spare parts for that. Make sure you have a battery for your remote for your trolling motor. Again, you may not have access to that easily during your trip and you don't want to lose a day trying to run to town to get a battery. A lot of these items are not 100% necessary. Some of them are 100% necessary if you're going to come up here and go musky fishing. Just go through a checklist as you're coming to Canada and make sure you guys are as prepared as you possibly can be when you get up here. I hope you guys have good luck. Check out the video right here for one of our really great days on the water. And for now, 54 Bust is out of here and we'll catch you guys out on the water later. Okay, that's a wrap.